I think AI is a reflection of humanity and, and a real opportunity for everyone to move forward. Katie, thank Hello. you for joining us. So I, it, it's, you obviously, you, the nature of your role involves innovation. Mm -hmm. I'm also really interested about why, what happens when you try and bring a whole organization along. So there's, there's often there's people like you sat in an organization who are focused on innovation, but the rest of the organization kind of has legacy ways of doing things and kind of can sometimes be a little harder to, to bring along. So how do you kind of create a culture of innovation? Yeah, um, well, I'm really fortunate to sit as part of a center of expertise that Publicis has invested in. It's been building over the last two or three years. And there's a very strong central group of about 100 leaders who have then propagated the, the, the good word about innovation and, and embracing technologies like Web3 and AI and helping their teams to, to learn about it so that they can then spread that message across our group. And we've actually, uh, over that period of time, we've enabled about 3,000 people across our business business to run activations with our customers through this sort of scaling methodology of making sure that there's a center of expertise and that we can proliferate that through internal knowledge development, but also with our clients and really support the use cases so people can understand, you know, how they can use this technology to engage consumers. So you've said Web3, it seems to be the, the, the main topic of conversation as we talked about innovation in the, in the ad industry, that was, that was it. And then uh, November of 20. 22 we it seemed like collectively everyone just moved on yeah but like web3 metaverse uh nfts it, it, none of it's gone away yeah and so I'm, I'm, I'm interested in kind of like now the hype has disappeared and it actually can continue to grow without that where is it heading yeah, well, I think uh, Web3 has all kinds of fantastic opportunities. Um, we're working on immersive experiences, but also working on quite a lot of blending Web3 technology with real life experience. So thinking about how Web3 tech like wallets and NFTs are going to completely uh, change the way that we have relationships with consumers as brands and retailers, the way that we build loyalty programs, the way that we gamify and incentivize their participation and their engagement. Uh, it's going to radically transform social channels and the way that the web works and the data that we have about consumers, um, not to mention the Internet of Things and thinking about data signals coming from wearable devices, for example, and from your phone, and, and then layering this fantastic level of kind of AI on top of all of that to really understand so much more and have so much more insight about what people are interested in, what they care about. There's just going to be a dawn of a new era of, of understanding and ability to micro-target and personalize uh, the brand messages, the experiences, the content, et cetera. And you sort of just touched on it a little bit, but I want to explore it a little bit further because as, as whenever we talk about innovation and the things that happen, sometimes um, people, mm. humans, are forgotten. And mm. so we kind of like yeah. innovating, but like we forget that actually there are people that need to interact with with the innovation and, and, and use it for it to kind of become a thing. Mm -hmm. And so how do you kind of ensure that you are still connected with people? Well, it's really interesting, actually. I'm, I'm going to steal a thought maybe from somebody else that I heard say this uh, during CAN, um, in that actually AI actually just makes us, it tells us more about human beings. It's actually a, the data that AI has, uses to train its models is actually a function of decades of history of humans gathering you know, lots of information and, um, and speaking to each other in social channels and having ideas and being creative. Uh, so AI actually couldn't be more human in a way. Um, it might not be able to exactly replicate what it's like for you and I to have a conversation right now, but it, it's already so much better since the advent of GPT-4 and it's going to continue to evolve. So. Um, I think AI is a reflection of humanity and, and a real opportunity for everyone to move forward with more knowledge, with you know, being able to progress their projects more quickly, to be more cost efficient, um, and to have exciting work to do, essentially. So that's a, uh, actually, that's a really refreshing perspective to kind of to talk about the, kind of the humanity that is actually is inbuilt into, into, into AI. But I guess... The, um, the opposite to that, or, or the, the counterforce to that, is that that comes with inherent like human failures as well, mm. our biases. Yeah. So how do you kind of rule some of that stuff out and nullify it? 
Yeah, I think it's very important to train machine learning models to, to understand bias and discrimination and um, and to recognize when and to call out uh, red flags. It's just like we have brand safety measures and technology already built into the way advertising works today. Um, we need to make sure that the AIs are aware of that, that they're guarding against it, that they're not picking up all those really negative points um, that, you know, that affect our society today and that could proliferate in a kind of a, a very quickly you know, large language model learning kind of environment. Um, but, I, you know, I think humans are still at the helm, so humans can govern that and um, the technology isn't going to kind of run off and do its own thing. So I think it's important that, um, you know, just like you treat your child, uh, uh, train your child or teach them about, you know, good morals and ethics, uh, you know, we can give guidance to, to machine learning to help it to uh, have structure around what's, what's okay and what's not and what's acceptable and what's right in our society as well. I, I would love to like understand like brands that you feel like have, have utilized some of the more uh, newer technologies in, in, in interesting ways. So kind of we, we learn from other examples, case studies. Yeah. And so what, what would be the ones that you'd point to and go, actually that's, that's good use of tech? Yeah. Um, well, I think, you know, we have, we're like, very fortunate to have some of, some brands within our portfolio that are very innovative, and I'm sure it'll be no surprise to anyone if you've been to Viva Tech, for example, that LVMH is one of our most innovative and forward-thinking brands, and they actually love to experiment, and, you know, and I saw them last year at Viva Tech doing a lot with AI, with avatars, with augmented reality, and, you know, they just... They love to play with everything, and I love seeing that from a brand. So, so I would say they're one of the more extreme examples of, of brands that do that and like to tell the world about it as well, share the innovation with everyone else and show what's possible. We have brands that are leading innovation in a variety of different ways. Some of them are, that I unfortunately can't name, are working on the first decentralized identity propositions at scale um, that are going to be very, very exciting things for the world that, um, you know, enable or the the real opportunity for consumers to have control of their own data, to maintain their own privacy, but also have this sense of true interoperability um, across the things that they're interested in, the brands they love, the products they love, in, in ways that have never been possible before. So, um, yeah, so more coming soon on that. I'm only, I'm vaguely familiar, mm. but I, 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 some of our audience might not actually know anything that's happening. So, so it'd be good for you to maybe understand, like, yeah. break down what, what the challenge is and, and therefore what does that mean? Yeah, um, well, I think if, if anyone has been, you know, watching the, the, the evolution of the kind of cookie list uh, situation in the marketing industry, as I'm sure we're all familiar with, um, you know, one way in which that will potentially be addressed going forward is actually with, um, with uh, kind of decentralized wallet propositions, with people um, having essentially a, a, an interoperable kind of global or universal account through having a Web3 wallet. Um, and, and also having, we're designing a lot of solutions around that that are much more accessible to the average consumer, not like the Web3 kind of techie yes. that you have to be today to understand and remember all your passwords and everything. Yeah. Um, so a lot of those things will function in a much easier way in future. And then that, the way that Web3 technology works is it's, it's really easy to build applications so that um, you can actually have kind of a, a universal identity and then port that like all over, you know, different websites and different commerce spaces or um, real life kind of IRL experiences as well as in virtual experiences in gaming, et cetera. And those are the kinds of things that are going to really allow us to navigate Internet technology of the future um, and have the kinds of experiences I think brands have been imagining and hoping for for a very long time and consumers as well. So you're uh, obviously you are like um, your job involves looking at what's next mm -hmm. and so thinking about your role in two years time mm -hmm. like what do you, what are the, going to be the things that are maybe keeping you up at night or maybe just getting you excited? Yeah um, I'm I feel like we're at the tip of the iceberg about what Web3 technology and AI could really be. And what I'm very excited to see in, in two or three years' time is some of those use cases, some of the things that we're working on with customers right now, and not just us. Obviously, there's lots of other organizations kind of racing towards uh, being able to do the cool, new, newest, coolest thing as quickly as possible. But um, I, 
I just, I feel like the, that consumer experience is gonna be so different in, in the blink of an eye, really. Um, and especially with the release of like Apple's Vision Pro glasses, for example, there's, you know, real accessibility uh, in many ways around, and there are many other kinds of ones coming after them that are doing kind of, uh, they have immersive wearable technology that uh, is gonna change how we interact with the world and with the virtual world and, um, and change how brands and retailers communicate with consumers. So I'm actually just really excited over the next two or three years to see all of that come to fruition. And so it, it, we, we talked earlier a, a little bit kind of like creating a culture of innovation, but also like I, I also thought it was like an innovation mindset. So even if your job title doesn't have innovation in it, you can still look at kind of it, it, have that sort of mindset. So what, what would you maybe kind of what tips would you give for people to kind of be open to what's next. <laughs> well, I think that that's the key word really is open. Um, and I always encourage all the people on my team to keep learning, keep going to events, keep meeting people. I think great ideas don't just come from one person. And, and oftentimes the, the biggest leaps I've been able to take in my career are the greatest product ideas or you know, the, the new ideas about how to communicate with people came from somebody that I, you know, I met at a, at a cocktail reception or I reached out to on LinkedIn and just because they looked interesting and I wanted to know more about what they did. And you know, just be curious, be open, listen, ask questions, uh, and you know, try not to come into a situation with an agenda, Re really be uh, as open as possible to absorb what's going on around you because there's rich and exciting and creative things happening right now that, you know, I feel like you don't have to dig too far to really to, to learn about amazing stuff. Sign up to communities. Communities is like one of the core principles of, of where culture is going um, and where all these technologies are going. So make sure that you are, if you're a marketer, understanding the community, signing up to them, being part of them. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think just keep learning, really. I love it. The, uh, and then finally, I'm going to ask you uh, the opposite question, which is kind of... And this, this is, I, I heard this perspective many years ago, and so I've sort of held on to it. And, and it was the idea about like, if you want to predict the future, um, you could spend a lot of time trying to figure out what will change. But at the same time, you could probably identify the things that won't change and kind of use those as your guidepost for innovation. So I, the example I was, was like chairs. We've yeah. been sitting in chairs for a long time, and we'll probably be sitting in chairs for the next 100 years. Yeah. So actually, if you're going to innovate, think about yeah. chairs. And so I, I, I'm curious from your perspective, what are the things that you kind of think of as like eternal? Yeah, um, well, like kind of the, on the point we touched on before, humanity is eternal and I think it's really important for people to um, not get so absorbed in the tech that they kind of forget the core principle that, you know, actually the tech is just an enabler um, and, you know, we still live our daily lives, we socialize, we have friends, we have family, et cetera, and like that still remains the core of human experience. Um, but, uh, you know, I think, we're, to kind of get back more on the professional, on a professional level about it, um, Web2 technology isn't going to disappear. Like all of our social channels aren't going to disappear overnight. Gaming, as it's been up to this point, isn't going to disappear overnight. It's only going to keep growing. Um, so I think, you know, I, I see all those fantastic things that already exist in our lives kind of continuing to evolve and become interesting and then kind of converging a little bit with all this new tech that's coming around. Um, and, you know, I think that, and the core elements of those things, um, the things that are so popular with people, like uh, content is becoming actually a much, much bigger, you know, content has existed in our industry forever, but it's becoming a much bigger part of, you know, how you have a relationship with the consumer and how you build value and how you build loyalty. Um, and, you know, I think that's going to persist. So a lot of the core principles of our industry are, are not changing radically just because, you know, there's a bunch of new buzzwords out there and new tech and, and new tools to, to play with. There's a lot that actually we can take forward from all of the learning that we've had in the industry before, all of the you know, things that we know work and we know that um, yield a human response to them. Um, and we just, we bring all of that past experience and all of this really great stuff together and it's gonna be very exciting. All these things are just things that make us social. All these things are things that make us human. Yeah. And so actually innovation that, that sits around those things, those core principles yeah. will be really powerful. Thank you. Learn a lot. Thank you, Thank you so much. much.